So Asperger's in adults. In this video, I'm talking about Asperger's in adults and specifically talking about obsessive topic of interest coming up. Hey guys, welcome back to the Aspie world. My name is Dan, I have Asperger's syndrome, ADHD, OCD, and dyslexia. I make weekly videos on this type of content. So if you're new around here and want to learn more, remember to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. And also if you're watching on Facebook, make sure to give this page a like and a follow so you see daily videos from me. So most people with an autism spectrum condition like Asperger's syndrome have obsessive topic of interest. And I'm gonna discuss in this video uh, what that is, how it comes about, and how it could actually be useful. Okay guys, Welcome back, what's going on? Super pumped to have every single person here right now. At the beginning of every single video, I read out questions that you guys have asked me over on Instagram. So if you wanna be featured in a video just like this, make sure to go over to my Instagram page and give my page a follow and put the notifications on. The link is in the description below for Instagram and my name tag is above here somewhere. So once you do that, you'll know when I'm asking you to ask me questions and potentially be featured in a video just like this. Okay, so the first question here is from Emma and Scott 0912 and they said, what stim talk would you recommend that don't look so obvious for being in public? Oh, my best and favorite one is The Clicks. Now, The Clicks is a stim toy, and I'll insert a video of it here. Basically, it's uh, you could use it as a bracelet, so it doesn't look that obvious, but it just clicks and, and moves in certain ways. It's amazing, I highly recommend checking it out. I will leave a link for that in the description below. So the next question is from Freya underscore lol, and they said, is it normal for people with ASD to chew on wood as a way of stimming? Yes, absolutely. Um, there's a, a friend of mine actually chews, you know, his collar here on his um, his jacket, and I actually used to chew the tassels of my hoodie. But thankfully now we have Chewy Gem, and um, I'm pretty sure the link in my description below for chewable autism toys or chewable stim toys with Chewy Gem, there's a um, percentage off. So please go and check that out. Uh, the links are in the description below. There's different ones for Canada, US, and Europe. So make sure you click on the right link. So Megan A. Parker asked, what is one Asperger trait you wish wasn't a trait? Hashtag fellow Aspie. The only thing that I would say right now that I could uh, wholeheartedly say I wish wasn't a trait is hitting my head when in a meltdown or getting stressed and angry. I can't help it, I don't like it, and I just wish I didn't do that. Okay guys, moving swiftly on. Thank you so much for those comments. If you are new to this channel or you are an existing subscriber, I'd love to know where you're watching from. Let me know in the comment section below what country you're from. Right now, I'm in Wales, United Kingdom, and uh, yeah, it's getting summery. It's springtime, it's kind of cool. Okay, so, Asperger's in adults. Now, I wanted to talk about obsessive topic of interest because I love this, because obviously I have an obsessive topic of interest and I love talking about my topic of interest, which is obviously, you know, because well, I'm on the spectrum and that's what I do. But guys, also, I'm repping the merch right now. This is the Aspie World merch. If you want to grab some and support this and be part of the superhero squad, links in the description below or underneath this video is a carousel of some merchandise that you could probably purchase. Peace. So I'm going to talk about what is an obsessive interest. Like, what, what, what is that? Then I'm gonna talk about an example of like obsessive interest in people with an autism spectrum condition. And then right at the end, I'm gonna talk about how this can actually be beneficial, not only to you, but to the greater scale of society at large. Okay, so basically what is it? Obsessive interest or obsessive topical interest. It goes like this. Because of the way that the autistic brain is wired, people with an autism spectrum condition will usually have an obsessive topic of interest or an interestive topic that they dive into obsessively and know every single thing about. It's because that they find comfort in routine, that they find comfort in looking for something that will stimulate their brain in a way that it's um, rhythmic for routine, but it also has this kind of um, uh, educational pattern, there's something that they can learn from it, because the autistic brain always thirsts for learning, and you know, people uh, who are autistic love learning new things, or love learning things in general. So I myself, I love learning stuff about science and like geopolitical um, economics and things like that. And so I am really into conspiracy theories and aliens because this is kind of like my passion for science because I'm also a scientist um, coming into play with my uh, passion for wanting to learn new stuff because I've always wanted to learn new things. And that 
is is how the, the the brain is kind of like thirsting for that knowledge. So with um, a person who is on the spectrum, they will have a topic of interest that they are obsessed with. That they it could be absolutely anything, and then um, we'll talk about examples of it in a minute. And they could just be completely obsessed with it. They'll know everything about it. They'll want to just learn it constantly. It'll be their go-to thing. It'll be almost like a comfort blanket, if you like. There'll be a wealth of information on this topic, and they may actually become an expert in this field because of the way their brain is wired and I think that's an amazing thing. So examples of this, like what is an example of an obsessive interest? So for me, aliens, conspiracies and all that kind of stuff is an example where this is what I would do. I, any downtime I have where I'm not like working on my YouTube stuff, I'm researching like UFOs, I'm looking for like documents and go to NASA and you know looking at what freedom of information stuff that they've actually released and then I'm looking at uh, forums for what people are saying about, uh, you know, I don't know, web hackers who found stuff on documents about UFOs. Then I am buying audiobooks and books about it. I'm downloading tons and tons of PDFs on those specific subjects and listening to podcasts talking about those aliens and those alien experiences. And then I'm going out to um, sites that have like had alien activity and looking at those and studying pictures and studying pictures in my local area that have had alien activity and getting really involved with that. Then somebody asks me, hey Dan, what are you up to? And I've been saying, oh, well, you know, I've been looking at alien patterns in the sky and I'm like talking about it for hours and I could literally look at the person and just bellow out for hours and hours and hours stuff about aliens, UFOs, geopolitical kind of like sciences and stuff like that. And that is an example of uh, like an obsession. For instance, a friend of mine knows somebody who is on the spectrum who is obsessed with Marilyn Monroe. And big shout out to Marilyn because I have a tattoo of Marilyn Monroe here. So you can see her here. And um, <clears throat> Marilyn Monroe uh, was a fascinating character. And she had a very interesting uh, history and all the whole life and death thing. But the most interesting thing is the guy that we know was so obsessed with Marilyn Monroe. He even went to like where she used to live. And uh, we know flew up to America, went to the house where she used to live, went to the place where she used to live, visited the areas of where she uh, visited, um, has every book on it you know, on her life and death, every autobiography she'd ever kind of released, any kind of anything to do with Marilyn Monroe, he has it in a memorabilia format. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's cool. I think it's healthy. I think it's nice to have a topic of interest, um, you know, and it could range from anything. So th those are some like topical examples of uh, popular culture, but people could be obsessed with um, camera lenses, right? And you could be like the most knowledgeable person on a camera lens and not specifically a camera guy, but just a guy who knows a lot about camera lenses. You could be saying, somebody who knows everything there is to know about drill bits or screws or screwdrivers and there's nothing wrong with that. You could get obsessed with absolutely anything and that is like people on the spectrum have obsessions. They usually cater around things like Doctor Who or sci-fi or sciences or maths or whatever but it could be absolutely anything. It doesn't always have to be those things. It's just those things keep coming up time and time and again like Comic Con and comic books and you know sci-fi and Star Wars and Game of Thrones and all these things. So you know and this is no exception. This is Asperger's in adults if you're male or female. Everyone has this specific like topic of interest uh, trait, if you like. Also, guys, if you'd like to see a video on um, a topical interest and girls with autism, let me know because I uh, actually did a video with um, Charles Davis on my channel before. I'll link that above here about girls and autism and anxiety. Now, I want to do some more videos with Charles, so let me know what you'd like to see in the comment section below. Okay, so enough about kind of like the types and topics and all those kind of things. But how is this beneficial to anybody other than just pleasing the self? of the person who is exploring those topics. Now, this is beneficial in a simple way. Let's put it this way. Microsoft, for instance, knows that there are a large number of autistic individuals who are very good at computer programming because they become obsessed with it and they learn everything there is to know about it. So now Microsoft have a program where they specifically hire autistic individuals to work for them because they are gonna be the most knowledgeable people on that platform showing other people how to do things that probably never seen before. For instance, with myself, I'm obsessed with search engine optimization and how to optimize content on social media, so much so that when I was doing talk in the autism uh, ball for the uh National Autistic Society a couple of weeks ago, I was actually approached by a firm, a marketing firm who wanted me to come in and do a bit of a talk about that my obsession with SEO. Could I teach them some stuff? Could I show them some things? Could I do a talk for them and their staff? Could they learn from me? And so I went there and I did the talk and because I'm obsessed with it, it wasn't really hard work. It was just me talking about something that I'm obsessed with and I absolutely love. I like, I just can't get enough of those specific topic of interest and that 
was just fascinating. Also, um, another version of this is where it led to me um, and making a video on aliens and conspiracies. I'll leave that in the link above here as well so you can see that alien conspiracy video if you want. And let me know if you wanna see more of those because if you guys are returning subscribers, uh, big shout out and a big hello to anybody who's new, but the people who are returning who are my superhero squad, the Aswell superhero squad, thank you so much for returning and let me know if you'd like to see more alien conspiracy kind of videos. So, how is this valuable? Again, looking at things like Nikola Tesla, Albert Einstein, Bill Gates, um, Eminem, to say name a few, people on the autism spectrum who are contributing to our society with their specific topic of interest, who are pushing something forward. I also love making videos. This is kind of like one of my interests as well, is making videos, making YouTube stuff, which ties along with SEO and things like that. So it's adding value to society on just like an amazing scale. That is amazing. Having people who are interested in something so much so that they are adding mass amounts of value in scalability to society is totally worth it. So I am just honestly just obsessed with loving the fact that autistic individuals have obsessions. I love it. I think we should always encourage it. Parents come to me sometimes and ask, Dan, you know, my kid's really interested in Minecraft and gaming and obsessed with gaming. What should I do? I say, well, encourage it because maybe they could become a game programmer. Maybe one day they can review games for a living. Maybe one day they can be a consultant for a gaming firm. You know, you never know what opportunities lie through obsessional interest with somebody who knows a lot about a good topic topic and a good subject. Well guys, if you like this video, please make sure to share it with somebody who you may find that they can get value from this. And also if you're new around here, remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time guys. Peace.